All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, the Democratic race ha may have another billionaire entrant here to save the day. Former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg. He has filed paperwork to get on the ballot in the state of Alabama. A seemingly mystifying late possible entry to the race that is going to sure to be change? Well, absolutely nothing, to be honest. And if it does, it is not going to go the way that he hopes. Bloomberg advisor Howard Wolfson, he tweeted yesterday that the current Democratic field is, quote, not well positioned to defeat Donald Trump. It takes a lot of hubris for a mealy-mouthed technocrat like Bloomberg to see the populist rise of Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Donald Trump and think that his brand of centrism is poised to catch on. The best part, of course, is that Bloomberg's gamble is absolutely destined for failure, even if he did begin to catch on, because the greatest beneficiary of his rise would be Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Let me explain. Bloomberg has the same problem that many in the media have. He sees the faltering of Joe Biden, and he concludes the race is missing a strong, experienced centrist like himself who can unite all sides. Absolutely wrong. Bloomberg was elected in New York City on the backs of the professional managerial class, literally. These people are upper middle class white liberals to their core. So who exactly do you think would even flock to him in such a scenario? Guess what? Those upper middle class white liberals all support Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg. Bloomberg has no chance to win over the overwhelming amount of black voters in this country who support Joe Biden, the Latino voters who are backing Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, or the white working class voters across the country who back Sanders, Biden, and yes, Donald Trump. The crossover support he has is purely with candidates like Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, and Pete Buttigieg. In other words, say Bloomberg catches on, the top leader in the field will probably be Bernie Sanders, followed by Joe Biden. Biden, and then some combination of Warren, Bloomberg, and Buttigieg. He could all but ensure a Bernie Sanders victory in the primary, which I'm reasonably certain would actually be far worse for him than an Elizabeth presidency that he is so afraid of. Elizabeth Warren presidency he's so afraid of. As Osita Nuevo pointed out on Twitter after the announcement, it seems like billionaires don't spend their wealth that efficiently after all. <laughs> Especially considering Tom Steyer spent almost $7 million a minute of speaking time that he got into the last debate, and whose campaign is now embroiled in scandal for allegedly offering campaign contributions up to elected officials in Iowa if they endorse him. The key here, of course, is that both cases is that it is how ludicrous Bloomberg's candidacy appears and how much hubris a person must have to think that because they were good at standardizing financial news that they can rise to the occasion and become the president of the United States. I'll leave you with this particular gem. It's a man who wants to be president saying that Chinese President Xi Jinping really isn't a dictator. Is he a Chinese asset? He's going to have to answer this question on the campaign trail. Xi Jinping is not a dictator. He has to satisfy his constituents or he's not going to survive. He's not a dictator? No, he has to. He has a constituency to answer he, to. He doesn't and have a vote. He doesn't have a democracy. He doesn't. That he's doesn't not mean he can survive if his, if his advisors I mean, is, gave is him. Is the check on him just a revolution? You're not going to have a revolution. Nobody, well, then, no then. government survives without the will of the majority of its people. Yes, Crystal. What the Amazing. Democratic reasoning needed was a 77-year-old and centrist billionaire. Corporate. That's exact corporate yeah. billionaire who has significant business dealings in China and has apologized for the Chinese President Xi Jinping who called in a matter of months. A luxury uh, good that's and right. greatly exacerbated inequality within right. the city that he was running. I mean, the hubris. And here's the part, and you get at this in your thing, yeah. that is so amazing. It wouldn't even do anything. Is they yeah. can't possibly wrap their head around the fact that Bernie Sanders, who is tied for first in Iowa, who's leading in New Hampshire, who's right, right up there in Nevada, um, that he could possibly be the number. Like, they can't even wrap their heads around that. Mm -hmm. So their greatest fear is Elizabeth Warren, and he gets in to try to help to hurt her, but... Meanwhile, you may be just like literally handing the yeah. nomination to Bernie. It's Sanders. like Pete it's Buttigieg amazing. is going to suffer. Any of the upper middle class, maybe Pete the Buttigieg, centrist. If Bloomberg yeah. could end Pete Buttigieg, right. if, if, if he actually caught Gets on, in. right? If yeah. he actually caught on, that's the real question here. Yeah. But let's say he actually does. You know, let's say he does go above the one or the two percent margin. He spends unlimited amounts of money. Okay, so Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, even Warren. I mean, most of her people. She has been in this race for so long. Her people aren't going to abandon her. Just like. 
No. At the drop no, of a hat. She was genuine enthusiasm. Some of the her. some of the pickup that she might have had, you know, the vacillating support between Harris. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Bloomberg will go there. So the only people that remain are people who have basically not white people who are the majority or at least significant parts of their candidacy. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. And Bernie, of course, has the most committed people in the race. His people never left him, right? right. And they never. They're they're they're, they're not, not going, going anywhere. <laughs> so it's like they're all you're, all not you're going doing to Mike is ensuring actually in, in like a stratified race is that the person with like 20% of the vote that's totally captured is going to win the primary. It's insane. Well, and here is, yeah. uh, did you see um, Leon Cooperman, the billi billionaire yeah. that's been like fighting, like literally right. openly yeah, weeping crying. on Sean yeah, Hannity's yeah. show about Elizabeth Warren? Yeah. Like that is Bloomberg's constituency, the like five billionaires who've been openly weeping about Elizabeth Warren. That's yeah. like his base of support. <laughs> because it's so funny. I mean, there, you saw there were all these pieces in the New York Times about these like, you know, rich Democrats getting gathering in New York and hand-wringing about the field. Meanwhile, if you ask actual voters, they're very satisfied with the 20 choices that they right. have. Yeah. You know, some of them like Biden, some of them are in it for Warren, some of them are excited sure. about Pete, I don't know why, but yeah. for whatever reason they are. And Bernie Sanders has a committed, multiracial, working-class base mm -hmm. People are good with these choices. Yeah. They don't want you, Bloomberg. That's, that's, Sorry, that's but welcome. Thing. I'm glad to have you. Jump he in. He just does not. And See that's what the happens. It's so funny. It's like he has no idea what's coming for him. Like in terms of the scrutiny of uh, how much the, ch oh. the field has changed oh. and what actual media, a media of view lens of his actual business is going to be a big problem. Well, here's the All other. these bonds in China. I yeah. mean, like tw there's his multi-billion-dollar empire. By the way, what is Bloomberg News going to do? He has an entire oh. news operation that he owns. Right. With his name on it. Well, and not only like, that, but, you know, every reporter, journalist in this town is a potential future employer, Bloomberg. Exactly. Like, how, wh what's you, that going to be like? What is That's that awkward and like? uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but here's the other piece with, with Sanders, which is, you know, Bernie's a guy who says out and out billionaires shouldn't exist. Right. Right. Yeah, right. He says very directly, and, and the reaction to Bloomberg's entry. Bernie versus Warren was completely different. Warren was like, welcome to the race. Yeah. Here's some policies you might well, consider. She trolled him. She, trolled she him, did. To but it was funny. But, Bernie yeah. was like, basically like, billionaires suck. Yeah, you know? And know. so <laughs> having an actual, but Tom Steyer doesn't really count because yeah. he's lame and not catching right. on. But having like a real name billionaire in the race just for that contrast, right. that class war contrast, is also a great yeah. thing for Bernie. Great. It's going to be fun. All right. I'm looking forward to Crystal's Radar next.